Welcome back to another episode of Jason Creative. This is a introduction to Critter series and today we are going to look at the GMIC filters, the artistic filters and how to make your own art brushes. So let's go straight into it. Uh, this is the third part of my introduction to Critter and I've just covered uh, the adjustment layers, some of the adjustment layers basic overall, overall view on what you can do with them and I will do some more tutorials going into more in-depth on how you can use these layers and these adjustment layers to your advantage especially when creating unique pieces of art using existing photography and also using your art brushes as erasers as well so that's something I'm going to go more in depth but let's go straight into how to create your own artistic compositions using a combination of different layers and using these artistic filters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the image that I've got already and it's an image of a maple leaf. I'm going to move it around and I'm going to apply oil paint. Now with oil paint you've got two options. You've got a brush size and you've got a smooth and you can select which brush you want to create the kind of effect that you desire. So if I just cancel that for a moment I chose a basic default tip and I went straight into artistic or paint. It takes a bit of time to process, so you've got the preview bar here, and in this section in layers, you've got the image that you're trying to manipulate, and this is an indicator of how far it's going to take, how long it's going to take in order to process that effect. So now I'm happy with the way that looks. I am going to press OK and I'm going to apply another filter so I'm going to apply a transparency mask like I showed in a previous tutorial and I'm going to take my gradient tool I'm going to use radial and I am going to remove parts of the image I want to be completely opaque so I've got a combination of different images coming through on this illustration so I'm kind of happy with the way that's looking so I'm going to duplicate the image at the bottom grab and drop to the top. I don't know what that's doing there, so I'm going to delete that. So now I've got another copy of layer one. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to go to File, Artistic, and I'm going to add Raindrops, which is another artistic filter, and as you can tell, appearing on the leaf. I can increase the drop size. So these are one of the things you need to take into consideration as a piece of free software, open source software, sometimes there are going to be irregularities with the way that some of these artistic filters work. It's a very complicated program, there are many different facets to it. So I'm just going to go back, I'm going to leave raindrops for this tutorial, I'm just going to go back to the oil paint again. So there's a way of pixelizing this uh, illustration as well so you could do like a pixel effect it's similar to Photoshop's mosaic okay add a transparency mask for that another one is posterize which can be very useful especially when you want to create a poster like effect using an image I want to reduce the colors to around about five and that can make a very effective effect. That can make a very effective visual. So I'm just going to add another transparency mask to that. So that really cover, covers that for the artistic filters. Unfortunately, some of them need to be developed even further. There are issues with rendering, and it does consume an awful lot of resources, especially if you've got a large image as big as the, as the one I'm showing you. So that gives you an idea of what you can create using these filters. So that's that section of the program done. And now I'm going to go to one of my favorite sections, which is the GMIX section. And I'm going to select, I'm going to duplicate another layer, like so, our original layer. And I am going to go for some more artistic components so we can look at colored pencils for example and you can play around with the size and the amplitude and the colors 
and go for circle abstraction, do a chalk one, do a cartoon one. So we'll go back to GMEC and we'll look at other artistic components, so such as Aura, and we'll press apply, press OK. We can add a transparency mask to that if we wish and play around with the way that looks. And that can be quite an interesting one to use. There are other GMIC filters as well, so if you want to um, do like a black and white, you can do like a black and white stencil, for example, or charcoal drawing. Interesting. So we apply that, press OK, Balancing Mask. So you can apply gradients like so. So this gives you a rough idea of what GMIC can do. And I am going to go straight into how you can create your own pencils. So let's just escape all of that. And let's go into making your own art brushes. So what you would normally do is that you would select a pre-existing art brush like so, one of the fill brushes exists, fill circle. And what you would do is that you would create your own design. So, say I wanted to make a more chalky like brush, and I wanted to add some extra characteristics to it. What I would do is I would select the object in question, press Control C, so it's on your clipboard, go to predefined tips. Go to clipboard, PJR. This is very important, create a mask from color. So you've got your spacing, you can adjust your spacing like so. And also know that there are many different options for this as well. So you've got your rotation, you've got size, you've got your opacities, you can play around with it accordingly. So you might want to increase your opacity slightly, change the size of it. So depending on how hard you press on your tablet, you get effects. You might want to add a fuzzy dab to it, create some more variety in the brush stroke. You may even want to put a rotation into the brush as well, so that changes the dynamics of the brush. Like so as you press you get these this chalky type brush and it's very handy for making your own kind of art brushes. I strongly recommend that you play around with the different settings. You can also change the hue, so if I want to change the hue a bit the settings on here so they're roughly equal. You can change the way that looks colour wise. So when you're painting it looks like you're actually painting using real paints and that can be very handy as well. So I would play around with the different features to do with art brushes. And this concludes our tutorial. I'll be going more in depth in regards to what you can do in the animation section of Krita and I will also cover more material in regards to how to set up your layout and how to play around with tagging your brush tips, so assigning a tag and putting them into groups. More of that's coming soon. Thank you for watching. Keep tuned.